Thank you again for letting me speak. Um, and it's not going to be as, hopefully, as boring as you might think it is when I say art therapy. Um, but I gave a handout for everyone to look at. And this is really fun. For me, it's fun. Um, it's very, art therapy and art is very dear to my heart for so many reasons. But, um, oh, sorry, got to put the glasses on. Um, am I too loud? No, no. Okay. All right, uh, so as you see, I, I, I had a story in there. Art is really, is very healing for all ages, but particularly for, I, I have a background when I've worked a lot with people with post-traumatic stress disorder, seniors, um, I'm a dementia care practitioner, and how art, it doesn't always have to be painting, it can be music, it can be sewing, it can be sculpting, it can be woodworking. Anything in that area that creates and taps into the other side of the brain where it's creative and Studies have been proven about how healing it is. Um, and I did bring some of my bird paintings. All my other paintings are way too big to even get into my little Honda Civic. I couldn't bring any of my big paintings, but I have my, my cards over there that if you want to look on my website, you can see some other work that I've done. For me personally, what does art mean for me? I think I may have shared last week, and if everyone's done eating, when I was two and a half years old, um, I was run over by a riding lawnmower. My father was riding one of those big cup cadets with the big dual blades. And I was walking behind. I was supposed to be washed by my, my brother. Um, and daddy had gotten a twig in the tractor or whatever, put it in reverse and ran right over me. The tire ran over my leg fed up into. So 16 surgeries later on that leg and on my foot. Um, what do you do when you're two and a half years old? They were going to amputate above the knee. A brilliant surgeon by the name of Dr. Charles Bromley said that Achilles tendon isn't severed. Let's, let, I was a guinea pig, let's face it. It was really before vascular surgery was used. Um, multiple surgeries at age six, I developed post staphylococcus pneumonia and, and, and actually died. They brought me back. Um, so, but throughout all this time as a child, what do you do when you're two and a half years old? You draw. So I've never had an art lesson in my life. But I feel it's a God-given gift. But the thing is, for me, that from that tender age all through till now, art is my little safe haven. Yes, I was an opera singer, but that's a very public thing. Um, but my art is where I go, my studio, my little safe haven, that's where I go. Um, in 1990, I was attacked, um, beaten with a baseball bat and stabbed. Um, in the process of my healing through that, where do you think I spent the majority of my time? In my studio, because that is where my emotion, my fear, my trauma, for me, it was painting. Uh, for some people it might be woodworking, for some people it might be poetry. So as we age, we all have a story to tell, horrible things maybe we've been through our lives, or loved ones who have been through horrible things, and we feel that trauma with them. How are they healing? Um, you know, do they need to see a therapist? Yes, that, that's great, but usually your therapy sessions last an hour long. Now what are you going to do? So I encourage people to try to find some area that's creative. Um, some people say, well, I just work. I work. I had 80, 85 hours last week. I work. That's not therapy. That's not healing your soul. We, we, with this avoidance is what it is, truly. Um, so don't judge me, Turk, because I know I put in like 80 hours last week, but that's okay. But I still stayed up and painted. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. But um, so, so now as that transitions and, and when I moved back here from England and I really started working with the senior community, I saw a whole group of people who, through the years, have learned to stuff that, that pain somewhere. They've just hidden it. I'm not dealing with it. And many times that comes out in the form of bitterness or anger or um, just body aches and pains. I mean, granted, we all have aches and pains because we're aging, but I have seen and there have been studies shown that, that the, the power of art therapy can help deal with coping with your pain, um, bringing in that positive serotonin. Those are these levels that make us um, a little bit more buoyant and so, um, so, the, so art for me is very, very healing. And um, I brought my birds because I started this whole project where I'm painting 100 birds. And I'm um, at 67, and each painting takes me about 30 minutes to paint. Um, 
I, I paint in oils, I, I, I prefer oils actually, but for me that, when I'm finished with this whole project, I want to take that whole 100 bird exhibit and I want to find a nonprofit to donate all of that to so that they can raise it, use it as an auction, raise money for it, it'd be, and then they keep it. That's just kind of, for me, my healing is with that, and then hopefully giving it to somebody else that might mean something to them. Maybe your mom's favorite um, a bird was a cardinal, or a magpie, or something like that, and that's very touching. So um, I've always kind of made it a habit to go into senior centers, and I set up my easel, and I paint, and uh, people who want that painting to put their name in for a drawing, and then they win it, and then that's the little bird. And uh, recently I did that for Cedarhurst, and um, I did not know the story. And I don't cry easily, but I might crack on this one. Um, I didn't know this man's story. Just like everybody here, I don't know your story. I don't know your story, your traumas, your things that you've been through. And it's amazing when art speaks to someone, how they sometimes will bring that wall down and talk. And this was a man who was really gruff and grumpy and um, didn't have anything to say, and he won the bird. And then I handed it to him and he goes, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> I said, well, you can just take it back to your room and just look at it. He goes, well, I won't look at it. And I'm, sitting there and I'm thinking, why did you put your name in the hat? But, again, so then uh, at the end of the day, I went by just to say goodbye to people, and I walked in his room, and I walked in, and he's sitting there holding that cardinal, and he's crying, not sobbing, just the tear. And I, I came in, I kind of touched his shoulder, and I said, I'm really glad you got that painting. And he said, this was my wife's favorite painting. And when she died, I was so angry. And on my days when I'm really, really angry, I'll be doggone if a stupid cardinal doesn't come and land near a window or something. <laughs> so, um, but it meant so much to him. And then I suppose about a week or so later, I was contacted by a family member that told me the story of the cardinal and his, his, the wife collected cardinals and it just opened up these incredible doors. Um, he ended up passing away and so the oldest son has the cardinal because he said, I just now know that's mom and dad in that cardinal that looks over us and I hang it in our office. And Anyway, so art touches not only and heals those of us who create it, but it also touches the recipient. And so it's very passionate. And so kind of a fun thing, I always watch the clock because I don't want to get long-winded and step back to put the glasses on. Um, so there's something fun. I want you, the color of the emotional color wheel. So I don't know, how, and this is the psychology part that comes out that I love. I, I'm sharing, I can't pass this around because it has information on it, but I do take notes a lot. It must be because I'm old. Um, but I found, so as you look at this, I was looking through my notes at work. And, as, and we have our morning meeting. And I'm looking at this and I see sharp things. I see arrows, I see connected diamonds. Um, I see big squares. So as we're looking at topics on our morning meeting, it's all about um, uh, operations and needs and what needs to be done now and the importance of this and this and this. So as I'm looking at this, I'm seeing triangles, diamonds, which are triangles, and squares. So if we look at Triangles, they're associated with, well, past the knife and sword part, go back. It means considered aggressive or dangerous or negative, however, or unbalanced. Um, for me, if something in operations is out of sync or unbalanced, it needs to be fixed. And so as I, I started going through, in preparation to speak today, I was going through my notes and I started seeing all of our, all of our things I'm seeing. Oh my gosh, I've got connected diamonds, and I realize what is what is it said behind here? It says check on out of network costs for these people. So it's important they can afford. And it's like, well, to me that's important. I've got to make this work, but it's connected because that means I have to call a series of people. It's amazing how how shapes, which is art, and color effects. Of course, I have red on it too, which is what? Well, let's look at red. Associated with with blood, but also angry, color or rage, hate or danger. But aggression, that means I'm just, I'm under, I realized what I underlined were the things that needed attention now. Be aggressive in getting an answer to what I was doing on my notes. So, and so then the other one that I found, which was funny, because it's all, I've got a few arrows, but everything's are, I'll have an arrow with little circles, and then little circles, and little circles, and like a flowers, 
little flowers. So if you look at that, you look at what, what circles mean. It means associated with soft objects like a balloon or a bubble, but considered playful or soft, energetic, or positive or happy. And I've noticed that I'm a major doodler, and if people, people here may not admit it, everybody's a doodler. The church looking at me going, I don't doodle. But I bet you he does. Um, but we doodle. So it's kind of curious if you do doodle, if you do doodle, if you doodle, look at it, compare it to this. Also, look at your home. If you're going through and looking at, um, I tell this to everybody, if you go to Walmart or Sherwin-Williams or somewhere and you see the whole paint section, everybody, this is a fun thing to do. It's even fun to do with your kids or a loved one. Go and look at it and say, where do you feel drawn to? Pick out three favorite colors, just three, on, on this whole massive wall. And it'll be really interesting because some people might just go, they'll pick three, but they'll, they'll be all the really light pastel tones. Or you look at somebody and they go to the eggplant, which is deep purple and red and deep gold. And, um, it's, and so when you get that, now you've got the little checklist to see what, is, what insight does that give me about my child or my loved one or my friend or my sister. It's pretty spot on, a lot of fun. Um, but um, I, that's, I just wanted to share that. I wanted to share art therapy. It's not so, I'd like to take the word therapy out, um, but when I think of, talk about art, people just go, well, I can't draw. So they shut, they shut me out. And I'm like, it has nothing to do with drawing. It has everything to do with the emotion, emotional journey, healing. And, it, and it's not the end result of what you're creating. It's the creative process that's healing and uplifting uh, and insightful. And so, um, thank you for letting me speak. I knew it wasn't going to take long because I didn't know if anyone would be sleeping, it would be too boring. To me, this is very exciting because I know the power of what it, what it has done for me personally and what it's done when I work with people. Uh, like I mentioned last week, I worked very closely with um, uh, veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder. And working with them, it's amazing when they start out painting, they're painting with blacks and browns and reds. By the time we get to about the sixth lesson, if you will, or that sixth, they're in all the primary colors. Now they're using blues and yellows and saying, can I mix colors? So it is, it is amazing. And so um, real quick question, anybody here take photographs out, even though photographs aren't, um, how, think of your house, everything that you have in your house, take all the photographs out, how many of you have artwork hanging on your walls? You don't have any artwork, podiatrist, not even a paint of a yeah, foot? No, not even that. Like, I'm really bad at... Do you want me to paint you a foot? <laughs> you would do a better job at that, actually. So, I'm really bad at decorating homes and stuff. Like, I would put velvet purple curtains everywhere. My husband would be like, what are you doing? <laughs> you can't do that here. But so, purple, what does that tell me about you? Let me yeah. see. Yeah. That's actually my, that's like my favorite color. But you see, you know your favorite color. Yeah. So what does it say? What does it say? What, do we have purple? Oh, we do have purple. Or that royal? Your royal ro is royalty, peaceful, calm, and quiet. I don't know. You have to ask my dad that. Okay. He'll tell you. If you well, most people have artwork. Um, I think that if you did, it'd be cool. Um, but but the thing is, it's color though. Did you notice you went to color? You go. I don't have anything on my walls. I love purple. Well, there you go. Art is around us all the time, speaks to us. It's in our lives. It's just the fun part is saying, what is it saying to me? What is it saying about me? Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's just about it. I've, I've learned when I do public speaking, I never really know how to close. I'm just like, okay, I'm done. Um, but yeah, cool. oh, that's great. Any questions? That's how I'm gonna close everything from now on. Any questions? Yes, Mike. How do you, my father was an artist, uh -huh. do you visualize what you want to paint or do you have to take a picture and or see something by and or from a photo? Great question. You know, Susan and I were just talking about that. For me, I need a photograph or I would paint plein air, which is the subject in front of me. I have to look at something. My work is hyperrealism. Um, I find that the, the friends of mine, the artist friends of mine who are abstract artists or paint impressionistic, they don't need a picture. Because frankly, it's not really detailed. It's, it's not detailed. It's, it's how they picture it, how they, 
But for me, I'm such a crazy, ridiculous, I have to know every detail, which means I need to see it. You know, and artists, it's, it's all art subjective. I'll have to tell you something really funny. For those of you, if you go to my website, I have the painting of this incredible Prussian queen dated the uh, 1850-something, and it's detailed, and I love the Dutch, Dutch masters. Detail, this stuff takes time and, and, and to, skill to paint. And then I did this very um, abstract, it killed me to do this, painting of a cow, just a cow head, like a portrait of a cow. Literally took me 15 minutes to paint it. And I put both of them side by side up on my Facebook page, not on my art page. But, and do you know not one person, honest to goodness, I had like 200 and some responses. No one said they liked the painting of the queen. Everyone was like, what a cool cow. I was sad. I was sad. Because I'm like, this is horrible. This is horrible. It's a picture of a cow. It's not even, it's not even executed properly. One eyeball is higher than the other. It's not blended. It, I, you know, it's, it's been thrown away since. Um, but again, art is subjective and what it says to you, just like purple is your favorite color. Turk, what's your favorite color? This will be good. Well, I tend to call green my favorite color. Green? Wonderful. What's your favorite color? White. White? I'll be early. But I'm sure your couch isn't white. Is it earth tones? Purple? <laughs> And so, out of curiosity, may I ask what your um, occupation is? Sure. Uh, what? Sure. For real? Selling what? <laughs> no, why I'm asking is like, are you selling like uh, engineering stuff or uh, tool and die parts, mechanical? I mean, no, no really. I'm, yeah. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, that's why I went to college. Um, but no, but that makes sense to me. Our best line that we have is we sell food and sugar and it's green. Is it, it's green, you say? Yeah. Wow. Like that. Wow, that's great. But you see how that, how, how did I know that's what he, because he likes the black and white. And you know what? For most people, just to let you know, most people that tend to like, um, who is it, Ansel Adams, who's a uh, photographer who's all black and white. Mm -hmm. um, they say that people who tend to like just the black and white are very um, analytical, just the facts man type of people, are usually not the people who love a lot of you know, nonsensical talk. They're not the, you know, that's why I said, but, and there are different levels of sales in this world. We need the sales for, the, both of my kids are engineers. And of course my son said, well with a mom like you, we had no choice. Um, Still haven't figured that one out, but um, but no. So so you said when you said black and white, I thought you know analytical engineering, computers or mechanics or something like that. So yeah. I don't like the advertising, especially on TV, because it's all black and just something Well, yeah, and and the advertising is not exact. It's smarmy. It's watered down. You don't really know, is that a trick? Can I trust you? Trust, you're probably a very loyal person, and um, trust is important to you. Right? No, I mean like ridiculously important. I mean, for some people, we are a little bit laid back, going, well, I understand why they did that. And you're like, nope. Nope. So, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes? Well, the cow was 15 minutes. Those birds are 30 minutes. Yeah, but I can't figure out how do you, don't you have to let a color dry first before you take next to it? No. Oh, you know no. It? It's called wet on wet. The technique is called wet on wet. I also paint in several layers. Um, but some those people, for me, if, if, if you have to let it dry, and then you put, you can't blend them. So if you look, there, if you look closely, there isn't anything where there's a really hard, sharp line. Everything's just blended. When two colors come together, then I'll take a, a dry brush and run right over to blend those two colors together. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. I just wonder how that works. Yeah, when no. I paint a wall, if I get too close to the other, it doesn't look good. I gotta let the one dry before I paint the
Yeah. Well, the technique is every uh, again. Every artist is different as to how. But you know, again, look at that as life. The way you approach something, you were just saying, I don't understand how they can make it do like this and so on and so forth. But then we look at our own personal journeys. My way of doing working on a project may be different than the way you would work on a project. Maybe different than the way Turk would work on a project because what we're all individual artists. We are. You know, does it depend on if we're a firstborn or a lastborn as to why I attack it this way? Reading a book. How many people? Oh, this will be good. And I gotta watch my time. But how many people when you have a book? Open it up and you look at the back page first. Okay. You read the back first. Anybody? Yes. I like to love read you. Before I you don't? Yeah. I can't. I can't stand. No, I don't. I got. I got to just check the back. Is it worth me spending the money on this book? I got to know the ending first. Yeah. I, and you and I do vanilla and maple. I can't believe. I'm. I'm disappointed. Um, but um, yeah, so everyone attacks everything, to, you know, approaches and executes everything differently based on our experiences, our personality, birth order, some the numerology if you're into that, zodiac if you're into that. But we are all so unique. We're all individually as unique as our thumbprint, and that is how. That's what is fascinating about art. Um, when I teach art, a lot of a lot of teachers will say, "You have to do it this way," or "Don't do that. That's a mistake." There are no mistakes, there are always challenges. No mistakes. But I'll say, if you if you want to use that brush, knock yourself out. See what happens. It's all about that experience. So um, thank you for letting me ramble on. Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. Are you a Bob Ross fan? No, I'm not a happy tree Bob Ross fan. Well, everybody think they could paint. I, I, he made them think they could. If you're painting that in 30 minutes, you got talent. I mean, that, that's awesome. <laughs> No, you know, but no, Bob Ross. Had, um, no, Bob Ross is fine. I just, I just, I'm just playing around. But again, that's that technique for me. Everything with Bob Ross was always done exactly the same way. Everything really looked all exactly the same. Everything, and for me, I, I'm just. It's again, it's my personality. I. I'm, I watch him in college, so I probably yeah. drinking beer, watching him on TV. Did your painting get better after you were drinking beer? Pardon me? Did your paintings get better after you were I drinking no beer? Oh, okay. I never paint, I just watch <laughs> Actually, I was helping, um, some of you might know Stephanie Bierbauer, and I had her come over to the house because she's a watercolorist. She likes to work with watercolor. And I said, would you like a glass? And she was just like, I so struggle with painting these roses. I'm just, I should just give up. I said, Stephanie, would you like a glass of wine? Okay. So I gave her a glass of wine, not a big one. You know, a little, a little glass of wine. And she downed that glass of wine, and all of a sudden she was just like, oh my gosh, my roses look so good. It just it knocked down that inhibition for her, and now she's like, I can't get her to stop painting roses now. That's all she paints. Look at my rose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's the wine. So she did tell me, she said, I know that when I get frustrated when I was painting last Saturday, I got frustrated, and I had a glass of wine, and I felt so much better. So. So you're lucky I'm not speaking next week. I would talk about the influence of alcohol and paint. But thank you guys for letting me speak.